Hello, Terry here with Micronics Training. We've been getting asked a lot of questions about our Python fundamentals, or what I'm referring to as Python for Network Engineering course, and a lot of people are asking specifically about how I would suggest that they begin working with Python as a scripting language. Now, as you can see here, what I've got is I have a screen capture of a Windows 10 system that we use as a jump box for in our Python class. And what you'll notice here is, is there's a lot of things installed. We have Google Chrome, we've got Putty, we've got Notepad, we have Postman. But honestly, when it comes to studying and beginning to get your feet wet with an application like Python or a programming language like Python, I suggest that you guys just simply rely on the tools that are baked into the actual Python program. So what I wanted to do is I want to go through and do a walkthrough. I've already installed Python, but I want to show you where to find it. And I want to go through at least the general basics of getting it installed. And then what I want to do is I want to introduce you to the developer environment that is actually already baked into the application. So if I were to come over here and go into Chrome, what we will find is I can go to www.python.org and what will end up happening is, is we will end up on their splash page and if we go to the download section here I'm just going to put my mouse over it and highlight it. Now I have already installed Python and what you're going to see immediately is Python comes to us in two flavors. We have Python 363 and we have Python 2714. Now I'm using Python 2714 simply because I have been using Python for years and I've already got a lot of scripts and everything that are already written and I just really haven't wanted to go through the hassle of converting to the newer version. However, understand that the time is coming, that ultimately they will deprecate 2.7, but that time is not now, so that's going to be the version of Python that I'm going to be using in both my courses and in this video. So what you would simply do is just click on the Python 2.7.1 for, and what will end up happening is it will actually download an application uh, that you guys can install. Now I've already done that. So what I want to do is I want to demonstrate some things. So first of all I want to demonstrate the fact that we have a user environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just simply type CMD and that will put me into the command prompt. And I've gone in and increased the font size so that this would be a lot more visible and easier to read. But if I simply just say change directory whack whack, change directory whack whack, and all I'm going to do is say change directory to Python 2.7, what you're going to see is I'm going to be in the Python directory. Now if I come over here and type directory, you're going to see I have a lot of files in here. I have a sample of a Python script and some other things. But most importantly, what you'll see is I have my executable file for Python. Now obviously you can do some things with environment variables and make it to where you could just execute Python from anywhere. But in a training environment, I like to make certain that everything is corralled as possible. Now I could come in here and I could type Python and hit enter and what that's going to do is it's going to put me into the Python environment. Now from here I could do something like set a variable. I can come in here and say name equals Terry. Then I can come over here and just simply say name and what you'll see is it's going to provide the information that has been listed as the value associated with the variable name. And there are a lot of things that we're going to be talking about in the course that's going to go through different data types with regard to integers, strings, as well as floating points and things along those lines. But the idea is, is that this isn't necessarily the way that I would recommend that you interact with Python. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say exit parentheses parentheses and hit enter. And that's going to take me out of that emulation environment. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my search here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type Python. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for an application called Idle. This is the developer's environment. And what it does is it's going to be a graphical user tool that works very similar to what I just brought up in the command prompt. So if I click this, what it's going to do, 
is it's going to open a shell. Now this is very, very handy. You'll note that it's the exact same component. If I come over here and I type name and I hit enter, notice there's no value, but if I come in and say name equals, excuse me, Terry, and I hit enter, and then I type name, what you're going to see is, is the exact same thing that we saw. But this is not really the way that I would ordinarily interact with an application like Python. What I would want to do is I would want to come in and I would actually want to create a Python script. Now, one of the things I love about the idle environment is, is the fact that it is so multi-purpose. I can come in and I can run debugs against configurations. I have the capability of being able to look at values with regard to shell configurations. I can do configurational options with regard to changing things like the size and the nature of my fonts, how things are going to be highlighted and selected based on different values. And I would highly recommend that you take the opportunity to explore idle as a tool for you to learn how to work with Python. I kind of think of it like Python with training wheels. Another really, really cool thing that we could do is, is I can come over here and select file. And what I can do is I can hit new file. And this is going to allow me to be able to create an application. So what I'm going to do is not really an application as much as a script. And what I could do is I could come in and I could say that I may want to, let's say, set a variable. So as an example, I could come in here and say uh, name equals Terry. And what I can do is after this is I could come over here and say that I wanted to print. And what I could do is I could specify a value with regard to what it is I actually want to print and what I'll do is I'm just simply going to say print name. Now what this is, excuse me, what this is is basically I have set a variable, I have put the contents of Terry or the information, the actual value of Terry into the memory space associated with the variable name. And then what I've done is I've come down here and I've said that I want to actually print this name. Now what I could do is I could come in and I could execute or set up a value here where I could say I want to save this as. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save it under my Python directory, the Python 2.7 that I showed you earlier. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say Terry underscore name py and I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Now once that's done if I go back to the directory and I look at this what we'll see is I have that Python script right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Python Terry underscore name py and what we see here is, is it actually prints the name Terry. Now this is going to be a little bit more typical of the way that we would be interacting with Python but when it comes to learning Python this is not necessarily the most advantageous method of being able to execute develop create and test scripts. So one of the things that I love most about idle is the fact that it gives me the capability of being able to do all of this pretty much in one fell swoop because if we look at the script that I created let's go in here and say I want to create another value here so I'm going to say um, number and we will say that number equals and I'm going to say 100 and I'm going to say number two and that number is going to be equal to 101 I could also come in here and say that I want to as an example print number plus number two. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that script. Now I could just come over here and hit save and then what I could do is I could come over here and then re-execute the script and it should add up the values here but notice here it says well 201 so that's correct. However what if I were to add a third variable here? So let's say I'm going to have number three and we'll come in and say it's going to be equal to 1000. And what I'm going to do is I want to actually come in and add 1000 to this. So what I'll do is I will say plus 
number three. So that variable. Now this is useful because I can come over here and I can hit save and then once again I could come over here and I can execute this and we'll see that it has modified the output. However, one of the more interesting things in the IDLE environment is, is I could actually come over to run and what I can do is I can say run module and what you're going to see here is, is with a single click inside of the IDLE environment, what I've done is I've actually executed the Python script that I wrote without having to bounce back and forth between different configurations and different locations. Now aside from learning actually how to program in Python and what different components, data constructs, and things are, this is an excellent way to be able to explore more complicated values and topics related to Python than having to use six or seven different applications. So my first suggestion to anyone that is going to be interested in learning Python at its most basic or at its most complicated level is to take baby steps. And the very first tool that I would recommend that you get, actually get your hands on is going to be the Python 2.714 application that you saw me download and it already has all of these tools actually integrated into it. So it's much much easier to learn to use and then when the time comes you can actually use something like Notepad++ to go in and create the exact same style of configurations. Just understand the cool part also about the Python script is is that when it comes time to doing certain com things as an example if I come over here and I execute say the print again um, I can actually get additional information. So as an example, I can come in and let's say I just wanted to neaten this up a little bit. So actually, let's just say I don't want to use this value right here anymore. What I'll do is I'll get rid of this. I don't want to use this value right here anymore. Well, what I could do is I could actually come in here and say that I want to comment out this region. So you can see here it introduced two number signs here which is going to mean that that value is no longer going to be part of the configuration so it's basically been remarked out so if I go over and hit run run module and we set it up actually I do still have to save it what we're going to see here is just notice it tells me that there's an error and the error is in the fact that number three has not been defined so it's going to be an excellent tool for being able to troubleshoot possible issues that you may have with a script that you've created and it's definitely going to be a excellent training wheels environment for anyone that is just looking to learn about the basics and get their feet wet when it comes to working with Python so I hope that I will see you guys in a class later in the future and I hope this has been helpful for anyone interested interested in learning about Python, software, defined networking, or orchestration. So again, have a fantastic day. I'll talk to you later.